Hello. I just figure it's better for me to pick up a camera and film something than nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. We're just gonna... It's just gonna be unprofessional and <laughs> never planned out because, you know, that's how I roll. Anyways, um, I can't believe all this snow. I went and got like new lawn chairs and put all the spring stuff out. And I should have known better, but I've been excited about spring. <laughs> and yeah, it all blew over in the wind. Like even the barbecue blew over. I think it might be broken. <laughs> I'll show you. It's a disaster. There's the chairs. Well, Andrew, I guess, put the barbecue back up, but yeah, that's blown over our hammock we Andrew brought in. So yeah, it is a winter wonderland out there, but I picked up those rocking chairs from Target. I was like hauling them out of the store by myself. I like put them up on the cart because I was like determined to get them. And the lady at the front was like, I'm really impressed that you did that. Because they were like, I mean, they're kind of heavy and they're really big. She was like, do you want like a one of those crate things? The, the cart, flat carts, whatever they're called. I was like, yeah, that would be nice. And I was like, please bless, they both fit in the Telluride. And so I had to maneuver a little bit, but I got them both in the Telly. So Andrew didn't have to go get his truck. Anyways, I'm excited to use them. They're that um, brand. It's like Adams Manufacturing. Anyways, I love their stuff. Did get new curtains, I'll show you. I got these cute curtains. They're kind of peach colored. I got them from at home and I just double layered the curtains in here. I think they're really cute. They're just bright, fun color. And yeah. Um, did I ever show you guys? I don't think I showed you this picture. I love this artist from Etsy. Her name is, I think it's called Lion's Child. And she just has the cutest prints. It's from Hobby Lobby. Anywho. Oh, I did get, look how cute this is. I got that shelf. I've started kind of, um, shopping at, uh, like antique stores because they have old shelves like this that you can't really find anywhere else. So I normally don't love antique shopping, but I do for the fun little shelves. Anyways, I got those um, tan curtains at home too, and I double layered too, which I'm actually glad I did because, anyways, I find that when I close the curtains at night, there's still like a gap in between. And I'm like, I don't want anybody watching me. <laughs> Not that anyone is, but you know. Anyway, so I do have up some Easter, even though it's technically almost St. Patrick's Day, not Easter. Oh, I did update the shelf over here. So I got a little lamp from Focus from at home. And then I got this little shelving unit and then I got some herbs. I was kind of sick of waiting for herbs to plant. I usually plant them outdoors, but I was like, you know what? I want some that I can keep inside that aren't based on the weather. So I got this little stand thing from <clears throat> Amazon and it fits perfectly right there. But yeah, change this around a little bit. But yeah, it's fun. And then I got this pretty hydrangea, it's kind of dying now, but I got it from Walmart. Um, there's Stanley with his great grandpa Stanley, who he's named after my grandpa Stan. Um, lived in Circleville, Utah. You'll have to comment if any of you have been to Circleville, Utah, because it is my favorite place. And I got this rose bush. Look how good it's doing. From Walmart, it was like a Valentine's thing, a $5 rose bush, and look how big it's getting. I love, I'm like obsessed with mini rose bushes. I think they're so cute. My pioneer woman, oh, the lighting. Sorry, the lighting is not great. But 
my painter woman little planter pot. But yeah, dirty dishes in the sink. Anywho. So, I mean, I think I've showed you guys my kitchen, but here's a little tour. I have stuff up there too. Hey, Stanley! Stan! Can you turn that down, buddy? That's a sign I had made <laughs> for my grandpa owns a, well, owned, but it's still there. He's just not the owner anymore. Stan's Merck in Circleville. And it's like my favorite place in the world. So I had that made to remind me of that. Can you turn it down, Babalu? It's really loud. I love this picture of Jesus. It's so cute. It's from Etsy. Love it. Oh, I did get this at Home Goods this weekend. Isn't that so pretty? Those cherry blossoms. They were like $16.99. And I just think they're so beautiful. I'm so glad I picked them up. This print I got off of Etsy. This is actually my new favorite Etsy store. Um, oh, I can't remember the name of it right off the bat. But, hey, Baba Louie, that's a little loud. Can you turn it down? I want to say it's northern. They're from Europe. But this print was like $4. I got quite a few. They're just digital downloads. So you pay like $4 and you can literally print them off as much as you want. If you guys want to know the shop, I will give it to you. I want to say like, uh, I can't remember right now, but their shop is my new favorite. I do have some Stanley. I told him he could watch 15 minutes of screen time. Anyways, I do have some um, St. Patrick's Day stuff. <laughs> I found this at, at home. You're my lucky charm. Keep gathering stuff. Hurry, go. And, ow! You can't back up and walk. Anyways, love Lucky Charms is because the same grandpa that I just talked about. Oh, my hair looks fantastic. It was in a ponytail thing, so it's all bent. But, um, so my grandpa and Grandma Dalton, they always give us Lucky Charms when we would sleep over at their house. So I bought Lucky Charms recently for the boys. I'll buy them once in a while. Um, and then I found that sign and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get that because it just reminds me of them. But I think I've shown you all my bedroom little tour because it's always, I'm always updating stuff. That's another print from that shop. Isn't that so pretty? There's my earrings. Um, yeah, my bags. I have so many bags. Do I ever use them? Nope. <laughs> sure don't. Necklaces, earring. I have so much jewelry. Bracelets. Hats. Um. I'll just give you a tour. I love shelves, if you can tell. I have like a million knickknacks. I'm totally that person. I got books down there. Oh, these, this is so cool. This is a friend I went to high school with. Her and her husband hand make these. And I thought it was so cool. And the story behind these is, um, I believe she's Navajo, but... Basically, her mother-in-law never had a daughter to pass down their traditions to. Um, but then uh, this girl that I went to high school with, Shanna, she eventually had a daughter. A daughter, And so um, basically this is representing the grandma passing down her traditions to her granddaughter. But it can be like just any. <laughs> it's kind of just symbolic for like any passing down traditions to your kids and grandkids. So I did three boy faces for my kids. I don't know. I've always loved Native American culture. I grew up with a lot of Native Americans because we went to high school um, with kids that lived in the dorms. And um, 
yeah, uh, like I ran cross country with Native American kids and I don't know, I just love them. So I've always loved their culture and I've just always like, I don't know, it just is, I just love it. Like I really love it so much. It's so, I just feel like I'm, I should be Native American. <laughs> so it's just, I just love it. I feel like they just respect and love nature so much. And anyways, I won't get into it too much, but anyways, those are beautiful. They hand make them. If any of you are interested, I will get you her information and you can pick out different ones. So she has different styles. You can pick out um, how many faces you want in there. And then she just ships them directly to you. And I don't think they have an official website um, yet. I know she was going to, but I can get you guys her info if you want. So her husband makes them with the clay or whatever, and then she hand paints them. But they're so detailed. They're so beautiful. I think this one was about 50 with like shipping and everything. So, but I also wanted to support her and her family. So <laughs> it's a good thing. It's supporting her and you're getting something beautiful. Um, but yeah, the shelf I picked up recently off of Marketplace for like $10. <laughs> it was someone that lived not far from me and I just love it. I love these old shelves that, I don't know, they're just so cute and unique. And I got that shelving unit from Home Goods. Got a picture of Jesus. Got my dream catcher. <laughs> and another jewelry box. See how much jewelry I have? Ask me how much of it I wear. Not that much. Like, it's kind of ridiculous. I finally got a ring sizer because my rings are always such odd sizes that I was like, okay, I'm buying a ring sizer. But, anywho. Um, then, bathtub. So here's another shelf I picked up from... Excuse me. From an antique store. I did repaint it, although I repainted it a very similar color that it already was, but it's where I take baths. By the way, you guys, if you don't have these little bath pillows, you should get one because <laughs> they're so nice. And then Trader Joe's has these little orchids. It was like six dollars or something. I love it. It's just like a little baby orchid. Anywho, hey, my hair's kind of driving me nuts. I do not like my hair, just like one color. <laughs> like I always have my hair like all sorts of colors and it's kind of driving me nuts that it's only blonde right now. Like I'm really bored with it. Anyways, I'm getting it done soon, but yeah, closet. I won't bore you with the closet, but let's just see how much... Jenica's, Jenica's, and Andrew's. <laughs> it's like he gets that much. <laughs> Anyways, another, that's our bathroom. Won't bore you with that either. Although I do have to show you this cute little shelf I got at, I think, Goodwill and painted it. I think it's turned out so cute. That's from... I believe home goods too. Anyways, here's our bathroom. That is from at home. And these are from at home. Focus. I think they're so cute. Anywho. But I do have to tell you guys a funny story that happened. Hi, Stanley. <laughs> so, Thomas came home from church yesterday. Thomas is my oldest, my eight-year-old. <laughs> and he was angry. And he was like, I don't think our church is the real one. I think the stake center is the real one. He said, he was frustrated because all the kids, the kids are at church were talking about how God answers their prayers. And he's like, he never answers any of my prayers. He's like, I've been praying for basically his little stuffed animal thing. He's been praying to find him and God won't help him find him. And so he's frustrated. He's like, God doesn't answer any of my prayers. And then he started to say, I don't, 
I don't even know if God's real. And Stanley, my five-year-old, walked up to him and he's like, you're right, Tom. God isn't real. The only thing that's real is candy. <laughs> and it just made me laugh. But I'm like, I can't disagree with him because I think the same thing. Like, I have a problem with the same thing. So it's like, here I am trying to like be a good parent. And really, instead, I'm like, I know. It's so frustrating, isn't it? I'm like, I've been asking for a baby for four years. He won't give me one, but he'll give other people one. It's not fair, is it? <laughs> and then I had to like stop, you know, commiserating with him and, you know, try to tell him that, you know, we have to learn stuff. And But I don't know. I'm like, I don't know why either. I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> but I just felt for him because it's like the same frustrations that I have with God and with the church is, yeah, people talk about their prayers being answered and I'm like, well, why aren't mine answered? Why, you know, <laughs> and it's like at eight years old, he's the same things, it's the same problems that us adults are trying to figure out. It's like, it just doesn't make sense, you know? Anyways, but, um, yeah. Um, I have started going back to physical therapy. I finally got to a point where I just like can't deal with chronic pain anymore. And so I went back to physical therapy because I have a constant pain in my neck and it goes down to my right shoulder blade. And it has been there since the car accident, like 12 years ago. Um, there's been times it's been a little better, but it's like chronically there. And I wake up every day with just like my neck hurting, my shoulders hurting, my shoulder, but like, I feel like I, every day when I get up since that car accident, I feel like I've been hit by a bus. Like I'm just in a lot of pain. So, um, but it's like a dull pain. It's like four or five out of a 10. I'm not like dying in pain, but it's like, I've just dealt with it for years. I've never really, I've never gotten an MRI. I got x-rays and they were horrible x-rays. You couldn't really see anything. So anyways, I don't want to get into that too much, but I'm finally facing my fears. I'm probably going to go get an MRI and actually see what's wrong with me. And it's crazy that I have not done that. <laughs> that I've just tried to do physical therapy and tried to manage it. And the problem is we didn't get a lot of, we didn't get hardly any money from the car accident. Um, so part of me is just like, I don't want to go spend our money. Like, doing MRIs and CAT scans and all this stuff and spending all this money and what if I need surgery and like my OCD brain also takes everything like way too far like oh my gosh what if they tell me I have arthritis the rest of my life and then I'm just gonna be miserable I don't know if any of you guys have OCD you know how crazy your brain goes with anything it takes things like makes them 10 times worse than they actually are so but I'm finally facing my fears I gotta go figure out what's going on with my body and see if I can just manage my pain and not be in like such pain every day because it's, it's to the point where it's hard for me to get out of bed um because I <clears throat> I don't hurt when I'm I don't usually hurt when I'm laying down so it's anyways it's rough but yeah this year I'm just trying to look at me grabbing my neck I'm, like stressed talking about it I'm like Ugh. <laughs> trying to face my fears this year which I have a fear of doctors um I don't know I just get so anxious going to doctors and even physical therapy and um OCD is just at least for me my OCD um I get words and phrases repeating in my head all the time and it'll just be something dumb that someone said or something that stuck in my mind um but it will repeat over and over so when I go to like a doctor appointment or go to do something like it's really hard for me to focus on what they're saying and it's hard for me to communicate um because my OCD gets especially loud in high stress situations which those are high stress situations for me um, which is part of why I don't get help for stuff and I don't go to the doctor. Like I'm totally that type of person that like, like an old grouchy man that just like would refuse to go to the doctor. Like that's me. Like I don't go to the doctor. 
I just, I don't like it. I get stressed out. Even when I was having my kids, they would like take my blood pressure at the doctor and they would be like, your blood pressure is really high right now. And I'm like, it's just because I'm here. Like as soon as I'm not here anymore, it will be fine. I'm like, I get really nervous going to the doctor. <laughs> like I would almost pass out in my appointments, like just talking to the doctor about my baby. Like I would, like being pregnant, I was always afraid of bad news. And so I remember like them having to bring me a cold washcloth because I would almost pass out like multiple times. Especially when they would do like the 20 week scan where, where it's like you really see every detail of your baby. Oh my gosh. I would like be so nervous for that because I was so terrified that something was going to go wrong. And like I said, my OCD would just take it way too far. So I always felt like I was going to pass out in those appointments. So anyways, it's challenging. It, it makes life a lot harder than it needs to be having mental illness, obviously. Um, and I'm not on medication. I've never taken medication for it. I don't really want to because we're trying to have another baby and I don't want to be medicated. So I don't really take pain medication either, even though I could probably use it. That would be really nice. <sighs> um, but I also don't really feel like medication fixes the problem. I feel like the best thing is therapy and to learn how to manage it, which is what I've done. Um, so <sighs> it's just <laughs> every day is just a challenge, you know, with chronic pain, with dealing with mental illness. It really is like. It's, it's challenging, but we just do our best, right? Anyways, I did want to show you guys the basement. I think I've showed you guys, but anyways, I love decorating. It is my passion. Um, yeah. This is the basement downstairs. I got this picture for my birthday. We went up to um, like Heber and Midway and I found this at a cool shop there and then I just got the frame for it. I love horses. Anyways, yeah, I love horses and cows. I eventually want to like, I totally wish that I could, um, have a cow and a horse just like in a pasture in my backyard. <laughs> Anyways, so this is the basement. And then, so when we moved in, there was a wall right here and this was all not finished. So we had this finished and we put in a closet there and we finished under here. Store all our bunch of stuff, like holiday seasonal stuff, and we put in a bathroom. This used to be Christmassy, but now I've started to change it to like country. Um, that's from uh, Hobby Lobby. That's from that cute shop I told you about that I'll have to let you know. Those are from Hobby Lobby. Anyways, so yeah, it used to be more Christmas stuff on these shelves, but I just got the shower curtain. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to make it more Western. Anyways, but yeah, then we had this closet put in, which I'm so glad because there really was not a ton of storage in our house. Um, the closets were really small and so I needed, <laughs> I mean, obviously look how much we've filled up this closet. Um, so yeah. Anywho, <sighs> then this is right when you walk down the stairs. That's what you see. And then Thomas's room is over there. And then Andrew's office is in here. So yeah. Anywho. Can tell I love shelves, can't you? 
And this is the boys computer room. It's a very, it's a small room. Um, and they're, oh, running into stuff. There's our cat door and we don't have a cat anymore because he died. I think I told you guys he had a genetic heart condition. He was a purebred Persian. His name was Pixie. He was only like a year old. And we took him in thinking he was sick to the ER. And they said he had a genetic heart condition and that basically he was going to die. And this was like within a day. We took him in. They thought it was asthma or a urinary tract infection. And then like a few hours later, they were like, Oh no, he has a genetic heart condition and you're probably going to have to put him down tomorrow. And then literally they called us at like nine the next morning and said that he had died in the night. They had him on, I, they had him on like some type of oxygen. So I think they had him in one of those like, almost like a tank container thingy where they have him in there so that they can breathe. And he died and they tried to bring him back and he would not come back. Um. So we'd only had him like eight months. He had just barely turned a year old and he died. So sad. It seriously was so devastating. And part of me doesn't want to get another pet. So it's really sad. All right, Stanley. Well, I hope you're all doing good. And just wanted to pop in, say what's new. Um, oh look, the sun's coming. Oh, you totally can't tell on the camera, but any religion is hard. God is hard and confusing. And, um, oh, I have to do, look how cute. Yeah, it's just, it's hard. Cause it's like, we're supposed to be teaching our kids these things about God and about religion. And it's like, I don't even know myself. Do you know what I mean? But I also think it's good for kids to see that their parents don't have all the answers. You know, instead of lying and pretending like I know everything, it's like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> and I feel like that's healthy um, to have your kids see that, that you don't know everything and that you're trying to figure it out too and that, <clears throat> yeah. I just don't really want to lie to my kids, you know? Anyways. Hope you're all doing good. Um, I'm going to allow comments on this video. Because um, I do want to know if any of you know or have ever been to Circleville in Utah. It really is like one of my favorite places. Um, but my grandpa still, the store there is still called Stan's Merck. Um, so he passed away... I don't know, five, six years ago. Um, but yeah, it still stands Merck. And it's just the smallest town. There's nothing there. <laughs> but it's the best. So, anywho. Alright, we'll talk later.